During this year's legislative session, the Virginia General Assembly passed anti-hazing legislation following a number of hazing incidents across the nation in the past several years. One incident in particular, the alcohol hazing related death of VCU freshman Adam Oaks, struck home to Virginians and his family's advocacy for hazing prevention laws led to Adam's law being passed. This new legislation affects many UVA students and organizations. The law enforces hazing training for several types of organizations and higher education institutions, including all Greek organizations and any club that has a probationary or training period for new members. Additionally, the law requires that all breaches of the institution's code of conduct or federal or state law pertaining to hazing must be publicly reported, as well as reported to campus authorities or law enforcement. Here at UVA, all students involved in an organization that falls into these categories are participating in anti-hazing training called Who's Against Hazing. The course aims to combat abuse within their organization, educate on the dangers of alcohol intoxication and hazing, and to inform students of the disciplinary process that will befall them should hazing be reported. This training is required of all members of organizations or the group will face suspension. I had the opportunity to speak with Senator Jennifer Boisco, chief patron of Adams Law, about the importance of her bill and her work in getting it passed and signed into law. Adam Oaks was my constituent and when he passed away, I reached out to his family and we started working together a whole year ago, more than that at this point, uh, to create some legislation that could make a difference and prevent some other family from having a tragedy like, like his mom and dad did. We created Adam's Law, which is in obviously in his honor. It gives all students in-person uh, training about what hazing is. Secondly, schools are required to post information, which you know that UVA has just done, about incidents of hazing. And then thirdly, it encourages bystanders to do something if they see something happening and they can be um, immune from getting in trouble. Those three things were not the case when Adam was going through you know, his hazing, um, and, and we are hopeful that it will save other people's lives. Right, exactly. And we are so happy that you did take this on. Did you face any challenges or opposition on this bill from other members of the General Assembly? Not on this bill. I, it was almost unanimous there. I think one person voted against it in the entire General Assembly. Not only did the entire General Assembly support it, but also the fraternities and sororities supported it themselves. The colleges and universities supported it. Um, and the activists around the country who have been working on anti-hazing legislation came in and also were supportive of it. So it was something that was very popular, something that I think is achievable and something that we can implement. Did you have any changes made to the bill as it went through the process? Were there any points that you wanted to include in the law that were struck before it made it out to the floor? You must be aware that there was a whole nother bill that I carried that dealt with criminal penalties and we ended up not finding common ground between the House and the Senate and so we've just left that. I'm working with Courtney White, who is Adam's cousin um, and his family. Um, we're getting some more data. She's been working nationally uh, to, to get more information on what has worked, what hasn't worked. This legislation has passed in other states. I believe that if we move from a misdemeanor to a, a felony penalty, that will help the schools be able to very clearly tell students that hazing absolutely is off bounds and they should not do it. I have no interest in sending kids to prison, um, but I do want them to stop this and I want them to take it very seriously. The second piece where we were unable to find common ground, currently we have criminal immunity for someone who is uh, overdosing on alcohol or drugs if they are going for treatment and the, the, the house they wanted to get rid of the immunity piece. I don't want to put that at risk. And so until I know that we can hold on to that piece, I'm working with families. We're still talking to stakeholders. And if there are people who want to be involved, I certainly encourage folks to reach out to my office. We are always building our, our efforts of stakeholders. For WVA, I'm Virginia Pillion.